thinking back to when you worked in the mailroom, so you'd gone to AFI, mm -hmm. you worked in the mailroom, there's many people, similar spot, and they kind of look around and they say, how long has this person been here? Oh yeah, I don't want to end up like that. I, I want to be directing and producing. That's a common thing. I think mm -hmm. it's a common mm -hmm. trait of youth. We think I'm not going to be that person. 40 years old over there, working there a long time. How does someone then get out of that? Because I'm sure that many of those people in those positions, they plan the same thing, but then life happens, kids happen, mortgages happen, and you can't just say, well, I'm gonna run off and produce this when you have a family to support responsibilities. So how common is that idea of, well, I'm, it's gonna be different for me. I'm gonna come here fresh out of film school or wherever. I'm not gonna be that guy over there in that department. I'm gonna make changes. Uh, I think for everyone that has a dream of being in show business, there's that moment where you start at the very bottom, at the whatever that entry level is, and it's different for, for everyone. But uh, a lot of us started in a mailroom. Um, and for me, I was having breakfast with my grandfather, who uh, was a very important role model in my life, the Friday before the Monday I had my first day in the mailroom. And uh, he said to me, what are you gonna do to get noticed? I said, I don't know, I'll do a good job. He goes, well, I'm sure everyone in the mailroom wants to do a good job. What are you gonna do? be noticed. I said, I don't know. And he goes, what do you plan on wearing? I said, I don't know. T-shirt, pants, nice pants, maybe a collar, collared shirt. He goes, no, you're going to wear a jacket and tie. I said, in a mailroom? He said, you wear a jacket and tie. Whoever you're delivering mail to is going to look up and go, who's this kid? And uh, I got there Monday. Everybody was in like torn Metallica or, you know, rock and roll shirts and cut off jeans. And I was there and they, they, they did not look kindly on me. <laughs> Who's this kid from film school with the shirt and tie on? Uh, and uh, the first day I was delivering mail to this producer, Rick Rosner, who had done Chips and was doing for this company, Filmways, was doing a show called 240 Robert, which was Chips in Malibu, um, starring, starring John Bennett Perry, Matthew Perry's dad. And uh, he looked at me and goes, who are you? I said, this is who I was. And he goes, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm delivering your mail. And he goes, where are you from? And I said, I just graduated from film school. He goes, give me two weeks and you're going to work for me. Two weeks later, he lived up to his and uh, I became his assistant. So I, no, no change in pay, but I no longer was delivering mail. I only delivered mail for about two weeks. And I was his assistant and would go around to the set and go to production meetings and that led me to the next job, which was as a answering phones for a casting director who was doing Rocky Three and a bunch of series for ABC. And then that job led me to meet someone at ABC who said, you need to get out of the uh, blue collar side of our business below the line and you need to get above the line. So I'm gonna find you a job as a reader. And so a year later, I got a job as a reader and that started my development career. Do you think that's still possible today? I think what I teach at my class at AFI, and I have young students, you know, in their 20s and 30s who have the same dream that I had when I was sitting at AFI. And I think that part of that helps is that I was I sat in the chair that they sat in. And I really believe that um, you make your own good luck. Uh, passion is really important. Uh, hard work is really important. Respecting the people on your way up is really important. Um, but yes, I absolutely believe that dreams can still come true. My, I've had quite a few of my students that have had very successful careers as producers, some as screenwriters. Um, so yeah, I don't 100% believe that there is still the chance. When I graduated from AFI, the barrier to entry was financial. You couldn't just set up shop and make a movie. You couldn't set up shop and make a short film. You had to have a 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter camera. You had to have it developed by Kodak. You had to rent super equipment, lights and sound and nagras and everything was expensive. So nobody was making something on their own. Now, my sons run a digital content company called At Phony Text, which is on Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, they have 150, 175 million views on YouTube and they've only been doing this eight months. Wow. They have no barrier to entry. They make, write, produce, direct all of their own content. And they do it all themselves in-house. So they have the advantage of making their dream come true. They're storytellers just like I was, only they're skipping the mailroom and the, because they can do it with a phone. I didn't have that luxury. So I do believe if, you know, 
Peter Guber told me that uh, the currency to our industry is good stories. That if you have one, someone is going to find it. When Barry Morrow pitched me a story of uh, two brothers, one who was mentally challenged and got inherited all the money from his father when he died, and the brother that didn't get the money deciding to kidnap him, he was a TV movie writer and I was a TV movie producer. And he told it to me and I knew it was a feature. And we walked across the hall to Roger Birnbaum, who was running Goober Peters Features, while I was running Goober Peters Television. But we all knew it was a great story. I mean, at the time, we thought we were going to make it as a little tiny movie for Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers passed. It ended up at UA. And of course, it also ended up with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise, and it became Rain Man. But, you know, it was a good story. And it didn't, it didn't come from a highfalutin, very successful screenwriter. It came from a television movie writer. And it didn't come from a feature executive. I was a TV movie executive. So, it, yeah, dreams come true.